From an early age, Paige was a fan of All the right, folks, back again. No more James. Please, King, shall we continue? Otis Rush, Freddie King, and Muddy Waters as his inspirations. You may have just got done seeing this, however, I need you to have a, a schoolboy fresh, he read Aleister Crowley's fresh idea in, practice. in this new clip. After coming across the book, he would later be quoted as saying, To have fresh yes, concern. That's it. My thing. So that you can get a fresh remedy By the mid to our present, Page current issues in our world. And Thank you for joining me. Hippies, and pots and the Guardians. The sex Shalom. And rock and roll, however, were not enough for the Page. Praise the Lord. After rising to fame in the Yardbirds, Jimmy founded a new quartet, Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin was and to any religion, Records, religious faith I've missed, Peter please Brush, forgive me. Hello and America bless you. And the animals. Within a year, the band had gathered a cult-like following among rock fans in the United Kingdom, Europe, and United States. Fans immediately began to notice Page's fascination with the occult. In the few interviews he gave, he made frequent reference to the occult and his study of it. He once told a journalist that you cannot ignore evil if you study the supernatural as I do. I have many books on the subject and I've also attended a number of seances. I want to go on studying it. And go on, he did. Page is thought to have asked his bandmates, Robert Plant, John Bonham, and John Paul Jones to perform a ritual with him that would cement Led Zeppelin's name in rock and roll history and set them up for life. The ritual, however, could not be spoken of. It would redefine their futures and that of Led Zeppelin. Among occultists, this type of magic is not taken lightly. It involves the conjuring of ancient spirits, the gods of men. These rituals, which would have been all too familiar to Aleister Crowley, should only be performed by experienced occultists and wizards, not half-stoned musicians, one practitioner would later claim. It is commonly thought that out of the quartet, the only member to refuse to participate in the ritual was John Paul Jones. The trouble started for Led Zeppelin soon after their rise to popularity, coinciding with the alleged ritual. First, Robert Plant was nearly killed in a serious car accident. Then, just two weeks later, his Aston Martin fell on top of him and crushed him, breaking his ribs. Perhaps this was an omen of the greater harm that was still to come. Perhaps the half-stone rockers of Led Zeppelin were not as great magicians as they thought they were. Hmm. Hmm. Almost immediately, Led Zeppelin's fanbase began to swell to become an indomitable and unforgettable rock force still adored by millions to this day. And as Led Zeppelin's fans millions grew, of individuals so who unknowingly are customizing their awareness daily otherwise. with total destruction. Page purchased Boleskin House on the shores of Loch Ness. It was the former home of his idol. Aleister Crowley, and the supposed location of a ritual said to have torn the fabric of our universe and allowed evil, unlike any other, to enter into it. Crowley's mentor, Samuel Liddell McGregor Mathers, had translated the medieval occultist grimoire, The Book of Sacred Magic of Abramelin the Mage. His translation, albeit a poor one, was used by Crowley to perform a ritual to summon the Twelve Kings and Dukes of Hell. Now, Crowley seldom criticized himself, but even he admitted that his rituals at Boleskin House had gotten out of hand. After his housekeeper's ten-year-old daughter and one-year-old son died suddenly and inexplicably, Crowley abandoned the property. He would later claim that a former employee of Boleskin House turned by the evil he saw there and attempted to murder his entire family. To this day, locals claim that evil spirits walk the grounds of Boleskin House, and it's easy to see why they might. In 1965, the new owner of the property, an army major, 
took his own life with a shotgun. Friends of Jimmy Page and visitors to Boleskine House would claim that at dusk, as the sun disappeared, that the patio and gardens would become awash with shadows, phantoms, and specters, the residue of a century of ritual magic. Servants and maids centuries as they of went, residual magic that the home was pure evil. By of course, in 1992, after spending less than three months living there in his 22 year ownership, Jimmy Page frequency house, stating that of conscious that awareness ran through it. That have no awareness of the what they're doing. Most recent owners of Boleskine House returned from a trip to the grocery store and found the manor set ablaze. The property was empty at the time the fire started, and no explanation has ever been offered in its wake. The evil of Boleskine House did not begin with Aleister Crowley, however. The earliest mention of death on the property is from the 10th century. According to legend, a church once stood on the property's grounds, but, like Boleskine House, was set ablaze and burnt to the ground, trapping the entirety of its congregants inside. The cemetery, which sits at the foot of the hill Boleskine House stands on, has long been the site of cult rituals. A hidden tunnel linked the manor to the cemetery, supposedly to give the property owners quick access to the graveyard to prevent body snatching which was, at the time, very common. Folks, I'm going to move the camera to closer page. to the TV so His that my battery Alex doesn't Crowley run out. Please don't mind the jogging around. Page bought an esoteric bookstore, which was a namesake of Crowley's journal, The Equinox. Around the corner, Page purchased the infamous Tower House, a building long associated with paranormal activity. One of his girlfriends, Pamela DeBar, claimed that Paige had her travel to San Francisco and Los Angeles to search for Crowley's lost artifacts. There, she was able to locate a number of manuscripts, pieces of magical apparatus, and Crowley's ritual robes. Paige, of course, had his own robes. He often arrived on stage wearing custom-made, one-off costumes. Possibly the most notorious of these was Paige's infamous dragon suit, a black one-piece embroidered with his personal sigil, a full-length Chinese dragon, and astrological symbols. Experienced occult practitioners assert that Paige's costume was indeed a magical robe used in on-stage rituals. Paige's fascination with Crowley spilled over into Led Zeppelin's album covers and artwork too. On Led Zeppelin 3, carved into the vinyl with a stylus, we find the inscription, So mote it be, on one side, and on the other, Do what thou wilt. Do what thou wilt is a core article of faith in Crowley's Thelemite belief system and powerful magical incantations. The infamous magician and friend of Page, William S. Burroughs, believes strongly in the power of electrical magic. The idea of harnessing electricity to perform occult rituals. So a Thelemite magical incantation spinning on millions of turntables across the world at the same time would make for a good example of this. The other phrase, Somo to be, originated among the Freemasons. In English, it is customary to end a prayer with the word Amen, which is a Latin word meaning so be it. The word mote in English is an archaic verb that means might or may. So mote be then means so may it be. In Freemasonry, every ceremony ends with these words, which is likely where Jimmy Page took it from. However, there is a more interesting theory. In the Arabic language, mote or al mote means death. So mote it be could, in theory, mean, so death it be. When we consider Page's fascination with Eastern esotericism and ancient Egypt, the theory holds some weight. By Led Zeppelin IV, the occult symbolism became painstakingly obvious, as if Page no longer made any attempts at hiding it. On the inside of the album's cover was a painting of the Hermit, a tarot card symbol. And from left to right on the inner sleeve were four sigils, 
representing Paige, Jones, Bonham, and Plant, respectively. Most of these sigils can be traced to Rudolf Koch's 1955 Book of Science, a work featuring a collection of ancient magical and alchemical symbols from across the world. Robert Plant's sigil is said to be the Feather of Truth, a representation of the Egyptian goddess, Mayat. Ma'at. John Bonham's was the least occult-like. This is what we will align with folks. John Paul Jones' sigil was a Celtic symbol co-opted by Christianity to represent the Trinity among the Britons. This will ensure that we and will his personal sigil, an inscription that reads Zoso is harder inherit to this new kingdom. Some say it originated in the famed black magic grimoire, Le Dragon Rouge, an arcane text which contains detailed instructions. The new high vibrational devil. kingdom that will arise as a result Page of your publicly claimed that he will never tell anybody electromagnetic what not least his own mental power. This is interesting in and of itself, as occultists and chaos magicians ascertain that a powerful sigil must not be spoken of after the spell is cast, or the spell will backfire. Page purportedly once revealed the meaning of the sigils in a quiet moment to an intoxicated plant. Plant would later say, I was wasted at the time, and by the next morning, I had forgotten. I asked him the next day to tell me again, and he said he couldn't, or wouldn't. The band members themselves were not the only ones to receive their own personal sigils, however. Sandy Denny, a frequent collaborator, even got her own, perhaps to her detriment. Denny would, sadly, become one of the first victims of the alleged curse of Led Zeppelin. In 1976, she suffered a dramatic downward spiral of mental illness and began throwing herself off of flights of stairs. Hmm. In 1978, Denny was found at the foot of a staircase in her home, having fallen into a coma from which she would never awake. Can you imagine the level of unconsciousness in the us, males and females, at the top of the food Frank, chain in this Matrix program? At an auction for some of Aleister Crowley's collectibles. Unbelievable. Page outbid anger. We are now despicable. Shortly after, an anger commissioned Page to compose the soundtrack for his latest project, Lucifer Rising. Fair warning to all of you watching. The film Lucifer Rising is believed by occultists to be a form of electric magic, similar to the vinyl etchings on Led Zeppelin III mentioned earlier. The entire film is likely a ritual in and of itself. In theory, by watching the film, you participate in the ritual and sacrifice your own energy. So for that reason, I won't show footage from the actual film here, only stills. Lucifer Rising had, at that point, already been a chaotic production. The film's seven-year development had already gone awry after its lead actor, Bobby Bosaleo, a member of the Manson family, had abruptly quit. Bosaleo stole rough cuts and cameras from the studio, and to take his revenge, Kenneth Anger constructed a magic talisman, on which one side there was a likeness of Bosaleo, and on the other, a toad. Bosaleo would end up in prison for life within a year of the curse. Jimmy Page happily agreed to perform the soundtrack for Lucifer Rising. Time would tell, however, that Anger could not work with Page, as he found the rock star's drug addictions impossible to accommodate. After multiple delays, Page only delivered 20 minutes of music out of the 40 that Anger had paid for. Anger was infuriated, and equally, Page became annoyed with Anger's demands to complete the job. The project degenerated. Page pulled out, and he evicted Anger from Boleskine House, where he had allowed the filmmaker to live rent-free. In response, Anger flamed in the media, and publicly placed a curse on Jimmy Page and his band. This curse, many claim, marked the beginning of the end for Led Zeppelin. While Led Zeppelin had already experienced its fair share of tragedy, 
the real problems only began after Anger's supposed curse. Mere months later, Robert Plant was nearly killed in a second, albeit more serious, car crash where he drove off of a cliff in Greece. Hmm. The accident nearly claimed his life and that of his wife and his child. Plant was wheelchair bound for several performances afterwards. Then, as soon as he recovered and prepared to tour, he was struck with serious laryngitis, leaving him unable to sing. Plant's laryngitis caused the band to cancel the tour that was set to be Led Zeppelin's biggest tour ever, with tickets selling out at a rate of 72,000 per day. This shocking cancellation was a catalyst for a riot in Cincinnati, where disgruntled and scorned fans stormed the planned venue. Oddly, the scene of the Cincinnati riot would later become the scene of 11 deaths after the Who's notorious trampling incident just two years later. When the tour eventually kicked off an entire month late, there were major problems backstage. A promoter staff assaulted the band manager Peter Grant's 11-year-old son for taking a dressing room sign. John Bonham saw this and kicked the man away from the child. Later, he informed Grant and two of the band's road crew of what happened, and they attacked the man in retaliation. All four of them were arrested on serious assault. In fact, they nearly found themselves sentenced to prison. Only a short while after, Robert Plant received a phone call from his wife informing him that their five-year-old son, Karik, had suddenly fallen ill. Two hours later, she called back. Karik had died, and the band immediately cancelled the remainder of the tour. This absolute tragedy spiraled Plant and the rest of the band into their darkest days. Plant withdrew from the public eye completely and returned to his family and farm in the West Midlands of England. 